All right, everybody. It is a great day today. I mean, my voice is a little bit hoarse, but uh, don't uh, set that. Let that let that uh, deter you from the fact that uh, we're having quite a green day. Things are looking up, and uh, I have to tell you, uh, Steve Allen in the chat said it perfectly. The reverse Kramer is actually wrong. <laughs> so today's a good day. Like uh, we've seen, uh, there's a little pump going on, and the question you have to ask yourself is why is this pump going on? And does somebody know something that the masses don't? We're going to take a look at that. So uh, if you've been living on a rock and maybe you haven't checked your portfolio, let me enlighten you that uh, Bitcoin's up almost 3%. Ethereum's up. Uh, everybody's up. Uh, Tether, but no one really cares. And uh, Ultron, 1.2. But there's some pretty big uh, gains for just today alone, which is kind of uh, awesome. Caspa seems to be doing this massive run, seven, almost 8% for the week, 7.3% for 24 hours. There's some other big winners out here. Thorchain, uh, Rune. Is uh, looks like it's uh, crushing it right now. And then there's another big one that I saw down here I thought was pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Terra Luna Classic <laughs> continues to defy the odds and go up 20% in 24 hours or 64% in the week. Who saw that coming? Well, probably the people that love Terra Luna Classic. So congratulations to you guys, whoever was crazy enough to do that. Uh, good luck to you. Hopefully it does well. Uh, and that's what's going on in the market itself. But the question you have to ask yourself is, What's really going on behind the scenes? And uh, the answer is, well, there's three answers, actually. ETF, ETF, and ETF. And it looks like because this ETF anticipation, and we're going to take a look at what's going on with stock prices of, of Coinbase and the different prospects of what's happening. But because of this anticipation, just here in the States, uh, if it was the largest crypto fund inflows for two years, and we've taken a look at this quite, quite enough, and it looks like there's a lot of inflows coming in, but uh, not like the last uh, seven days. So digital asset investment products recorded the largest inflow since late 2021. Remember those days, late 2021? Oh, those were sweet days. That was when we had all-time highs in November of 2021. It was luxurious. It was fantastic. And of course, we had to know that at some point things were going to crash, and they certainly did. And it looks like we're repeating things, not for the crash, but as far as like influxes. We added $346 million led by Bitcoin and Ether-based funds. That's the anticipation of a U.S.-based spot Bitcoin ETF. Last week's edition nearly doubled, doubled the 176 million registered in the prior week, compounding a nine-week, check this out, a nine-week consecutive run, year-to-date inflows to over 1.5 billion. Nine weeks, 1.5 billion. Somebody knows something, and that's, of course, where we got the... Uh, the beautiful uh, thumbnail, and we can see that there is quite a massive bit of inflows uh, that is happening. But the question is, what's going on? You know, are people really convinced that it's really going to happen? It looks like it is. And it's not just here in the ETF parts, but even uh, Coinbase. The Coinbase stock, someone had uh, mentioned this to me, and they said, yeah, you know, Coinbase stock is up. I'm like, no, it's not. But uh, yeah, they were right. And uh, over the last day, I mean, just today, we can see there's a little bit of a traction. But look at five days. Okay. Look at one month. All right. Look at six months. Now we're talking. Look at a year. Now, if we go over max, of course, nothing can uh, relegate to the to the to the past glory that was uh, November 12, twenty twenty one, or even back in the very first listing of April twenty twenty one. Man, those were great days. But uh, again, over the last year or so, things have been really skyrocketing, skyrocketing upwards. And the reason is because of this. Quite simply, uh, the people and the institutions that are are chipping away at this potential Bitcoin ETF. Guess who the custodian is? Grace, it's Coinbase. Grayscale, it's Coinbase. Arc, Coinbase. BlackRock, Coinbase. Bitwise, Coinbase. Vanek, Gemini, whatever. And if you want to do Gemini, that's fine. I don't really trust those two twins, but whatever. Wisdom Tree, Coinbase. Invesco, Coinbase. Fidelity, self custody. That's ballsy. Uh, Valkyrie and Global X, Coinbase. And Franklin Templeton, Coinbase. So, of course, there's a reason that the stock price is going up. It's because everybody's determined that this is what's actually going to happen. And then, uh, it's not just in America uh, where we see a lot of uh, a lot of influx. Look at this in Brazil. Br Brazil just hit a hundred million dollars in assets under management for their spot Bitcoin ETFs that are going on right now. And I think what it, what it is is because there's a there's a hype of of America potentially getting a, a spot Bitcoin ETF. It kind of gives the legitimacy for all these different spot Bitcoin ETFs. I know people will say, but Rob, you don't understand because like Canada had the first ones and they're they're trailblazers, and it's true they are. But you have to understand that. Uh, America just has the most amount of crazy money just sloshing around. And when we see something like this happening, people follow suit. Here's what we got. So pro-market digital assets regulations and growing interests are the factors, obviously. And there was a couple of good quotes in here that which make 
when you read these, it makes you extremely bullish, but temper your expectations. But these are really good. And uh, this is from Marcello Sampaio, nailed it. CEO and founder of Hashdex, and they're the, uh, the largest one for uh, the ETF as far as uh, uh, asset center management for these ETFs in these states. There's a growing positive sentiment across the most sophisticated investors, and we've been seeing increasing interest from some of the largest institutions, whether that be either allocating or considering adding crypto soon to their portfolios. Hashdex is uh, among those with outstanding applications for the spot Bitcoin ETFs with the SEC. So they're, it's kind of crazy. Like they have one already in Brazil and they're trying to fight for one in America. They're like, well, Brazil could do it. Why can't you? And the reason is because Gary Gensler in the SEC says no, because prices can be manipulated. However, I think with everything that's just happened with uh, Coinbase and then pretty much taking down CZ, it kind of leaves the path open. And even me, who have been a staunch uh, critic of an ETF coming, even I can see the light. So we'll see. And then lastly, there's traditionally been a lot of interest in crypto ETFs from the Brazilian public, said uh, Guy Silva, a managing partner at Tagus Capital. And the number of investors in digital asset ETFs will only continue to grow. So I want to say congratulations to everybody who has been investing into Bitcoin, digital assets, because congratulations, guess what you did? You just front, you just front ran everybody who is the marketing genius of traditional finance. You realize what was happening. You say, you know what? I think I'm going to get ahead of these people. And you did it. So great job. And then uh, to finish up, and we can't all be positive here. On this channel, I like to give a little bit of balance because if not, then bullishness runs away from us and we YOLO into the craziness that is the altcoin market and things like that. Even I'm susceptible. So temper your expectations. Just know this is from... Uh, what was this from? Oh, top seven ICO. And uh, just know that there are a, ma a good amount of unlocks coming in. Now, is this enough to, to offset the market? Not for sure, but just be aware that uh, the percentage of supply as far as DYDX, which I believe is in the top 100, 15% of the supply is being unlocked. And that's on the 1st of December. Uh, immutable, 50 million. That's 1.87. Optimism, SWE, one inch, Axler, and Adera. These are all being unlocked next week. Or actually, no, I think it's this week. So it's Tuesday. Yeah, this week. So just be aware that you may see a little bit of fluctuations. But in all honesty, it's not a big deal. Because just think about it this way. And there's a, one of my favorite websites, uh, intotheblock.com. It can show you this great little tool. There's two tools I like to use. It's called In and Out of the Money and Ownership Distribution. When you're looking at the top, I don't know, 500 different cryptos, you want to see people who are in the money and you want to see this green bar maxed out as much as possible. And what's great about it, we can see that with Bitcoin, the people that are in the money and the reason why they're in the money is because we've had, let me go back here. We've had over 70% of people who are holding Bitcoin one year or more. So when you have something like that, the people that are in the money is almost 80% out of the money, 16%. What does that mean? Price stability and price appreciation. And then over here for ownership distribution, there's three things we're looking at. Let's see if we can pull it up. Ba -ba -ba. No, no. Ah, that's not it. Ah, there we go. Thank you. You're going to look at as much orange as you possibly can. There's whales, which are individuals who own a hundred or more Bitcoin. There's investors who hold a substantial amount, but not as much as retail, which just holds a little bit. And what this means is decentralization. When you have a vast amount of retail, almost 90% holding the majority of the Bitcoin that is out there, you know, some person has 0 0.01, some person has 0 0.002, some people has 0 0.3. That is what you want to see because it's in the hands of the many instead of the hands of the few, which can dump on you. So when we take a look at this, this is just an easy way to you to see it. Like what is the most decentralized? And we take a look at Bitcoin, pretty much there. Now Ethereum, in and out of the money, doing pretty good too. That's why you see more price stability, a little bit of Ethereum with a little price appreciation. Not as much orange, but hey, not too bad. Uh, they don't care about that, Let's see. Cardano, also a good one. Price, price appreciation, not so much. Out of the, out of the funds, 57%. Ton coin in the money, pretty darn good. But again, look at this one. Whales, we're almost at 71%. It 
essentially, I think it's like 60 wallets hold the majority of the different tokens. And then on and on you go. So you can take a look at that. Again, the website is app.intotheblock. And you can see all these great things. And uh, I think this is positive and bullish for us. Unless you're Algorand. Jeez, you've gotten crushed. And that's it for today. So look, I know it's been a rough uh, rough time since 2021. But again, just hold on. I think th uh, the best things, the best days are ahead of us. But that's it for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. So we got to take off. Take off. Thanks so much for stopping by.